My teacher told me I had potential. She says, <laughs> I don't think my mom let me celebrate Halloween because she didn't want to spend the money on a costume. <laughs> Every time I asked for something, she was like, you think money grows on trees, huh? We're poor. I can't afford, we can't afford costumes and candy. And I'm like, we? <laughs> We're poor? I'm six. I don't... <laughs> How did my decisions end up here, huh? How did... You don't console with me with the bills, okay? I'm not even old enough to work. How are we broke? I don't understand. I don't even know my social security number, right? You're poor, mom. I, <laughs> my teacher told me I had potential. She says, <laughs> she says I could be anything I want to be. You're poor, mom. You, you messed up. I don't know what happened. <laughs> but don't shame me, okay? That's on you, mama. <laughs> Yeah, my mom, very, very stingy when I was a kid. I couldn't wait to start working, man. I was so happy to get a job when I was 14. I started working at McDonald's. Then I knew what poor was. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is what she was talking about. I can't. It was hard, man. I used to work at McDonald's. It's a terrible job, but people used to complain all the time at McDonald's. Can we agree as a room? Any complaint that you have at McDonald's can be answered with, it's McDonald's. <laughs> right? <laughs> you know what you signed up for, right? <laughs> Diarrhea. Why are we... <laughs> Why are you writing letters? What's going on? <laughs> People get upset at me. They get really upset. They're like, uh, sir, excuse me? I'm like, you don't have to call me sir, okay? <laughs> I'm a child, <laughs> Like, sir, excuse me, but if somebody's taking a shower in the urinal, okay? I just thought you should know that. I'm like, yeah, it's McDonald's. <laughs> this ain't Chick-fil-A, right? <laughs> yeah, it's not my pleasure to be here. I'm a hostage, okay? <laughs> I, should, I feel like that should be their slogan, right? ba da ba 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 this ain't Chick-fil-A. <laughs> You want ice cream? Psych, our machine's broken. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. <laughs> Just happy to make money, man. This is my job now. I get to do comedy. I love doing stand-up comedy. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. I get to travel a lot, which I like a lot. I was in Texas last week, and uh, yeah. Person there told me he doesn't see race to my face. He told me. <laughs> I was like, peekaboo, hello. <laughs> what do you mean you don't see race, right? That's a crazy position to take, right? Also, like for the record, white people have great vision. <laughs> Top notch. I would argue the best vision of all the races. You guys have seen things that no other race has ever seen. You seen Bigfoot? Uh, <laughs> that was you. Uh, you see ghosts? The movie La La Land? Yeah. Great vision. <laughs> I tried to watch La La Land the other day and Netflix was like, did you mean Black Panther? I'm like, no. <laughs> Stop recommending hitting figures. What's going on? What's Really good vision. You guys be seeing stuff. There's never been a ghost sighting in Africa. The whole continent. Weird, right? Not one haunted hut. Not even... We don't see ghosts. The only ghost black people see is the Holy Ghost. That's it. We, we see it, we catch it, we dance, and we let it go. We just... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but you guys have a great vision, man. You do. I was really upset when he said that to me because at the time I was also dressed extra black, right? Like I was wearing a do rag and Tim's. So even if he was like truly colorblind, 
you can deduce. <laughs> like if I saw a guy and I was colorblind and he was wearing an Argyle sweater, I'm like, he's probably a white dude, right? <laughs> it's the white uniform right there. If you don't know what a do-rag is, uh, <laughs> so, sorry, uh, to fill you guys in, the people who aren't laughing. Uh, a do-rag is something, <laughs> a do-rag is something that black men wear uh, to stop gentrification. Uh, <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right, that's not why we wear them, but I like to imagine a world where, like, that's our last line of defense. <laughs> that's how we keep our neighborhoods pure. <laughs> we see people coming to our neighborhoods, we're like, oh, snap, everybody. Do rags up, okay? Everybody tie your do rag home. I need the flap in the back so they know I'm fast. Give me the flap. <laughs> and then, then we start dribbling imaginary basketballs, making you guys nervous. <laughs> And then when you guys leave, we go back to making almond milk from scratch. Yeah. What is a ghetto? I don't know. Yeah. Now you guys know what do-rags are, that's fine. I, uh, I've been studying about like white culture too. That's a fun thing I like to do. It's true, I've been doing my research. Earlier today I wrote a Yelp review. I, uh, <laughs> Drinking White Claw, I'm doing stuff. <laughs> Having a good time. I just found out what seasonal depression was. <laughs> That's a good one you guys have been hiding. Seasonal depression. <laughs> Calling out on Mondays, huh? I didn't know it was a real thing. I thought it was something you guys made up. <laughs> From like not putting enough seasoning on your food. But... Wrong seasoning, my bad. <laughs> seasonal depression's a real thing, man. It's a very real thing. I, uh, I, have a, I used to have a roommate uh, years ago. She, uh, she would leave me passive aggressive notes in my apartment. I hated it, it was the worst. <laughs> used to leave passive aggressive notes. She put a note on my door. It said, uh, to whom it may concern. <laughs> Karen, okay? <laughs> just write my name. Who is to whom? <laughs> it's just me and you in this two-bedroom apartment. You, to whom it may concern? Wait, do we have ghosts? <laughs> you have to tell me. I can't see it myself, okay? Do we have ghosts? <laughs> tell me, Karen, okay? She would follow that up with, uh, with all due respect. Oof. <laughs> if you don't know that expression, that's something people say right before saying something very disrespectful. <laughs> it's never something sweet after with all due respect. They're about to hurt your feelings. <laughs> I, uh, I'm happy to announce that this past summer, I, uh, I tied the knot, I got married. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I don't have a joke about marriage. <laughs> It's just something my wife insists I say on stage now. <laughs> like, make sure those women know, okay? He is off the market. <laughs> yeah, got married, man. It's exciting getting married for the first time, my first marriage. It's a big deal. I was so happy to get married for the first time, man. My first wife is amazing. You guys, no, she's great. I love her to death. She, she's incredible. She loves me with all of her heart. She's supportive. Like my first wife is setting the bar so high. She really is. She's incredible. Like we hardly ever argue or fight. The only thing she'd be like getting arguments about is that she doesn't like it when I call her my first wife. But like, <laughs> other than that, we're great. Like perfect. I love being married, man. I used to hate dating. That was the worst. I didn't care too much for dating. 
I used to go on dates. I went on a date with a coworker once. Oof. Anyone here trying to get fired by HR? <laughs> That's how you do it. <laughs> Went on a date with a coworker, trying to canoodle with a coworker. That's what I was doing. The date was bad. It was really bad. But it got really bad when the check came. When the check came, she was like, you're not going to pick up the check? I was like, um, you are my manager. <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm not picking up the check, Heather, OK? You get paid twice as much as I do. What are we talking about? She was like, well, I can't be dating a broke man. I was like, oof. Well, then promote me, Heather. What's going on? We could be something. Give me a raise, girl. <laughs> I, uh, I was raised by my mom. She raised me all by herself. And I didn't see anything wrong with being raised by a strong, single woman. I didn't see anything wrong with it when I was a kid. Yeah, she did her best, you know? She's broke, but she did her best. <laughs> we could have used an extra salary, Dad. <laughs> but yeah, she did her best, man. I, I, I really enjoyed growing up with my mom, but I didn't have a lot of the perks that a lot of kids with dads had. Like, I didn't get to watch my dad's favorite movie, like Scarface or Godfather, right? <laughs> growing up, my favorite movie was The Sound of Music. It was... <laughs> I know the whole soundtrack. <laughs> I didn't get to watch basketball and football on Sundays. My mom made me watch her favorite sport, which was figure skating. <laughs> I wish I could sit here and tell you guys how much I hate figure skating. I love figure skating. It's an incredible sport. Have you seen it? Oh my God. The Winter Olympics. I really didn't see anything wrong with it until uh, I invited my friends over one day. And they came up to my bedroom. And they're like, yo, who's that, who's that sexy girl on your wall? I was like, you mean Christy Yamaguchi? <laughs> She's a queen, two-time gold medalist? Oh, I used to love Christy Yamaguchi. She was my hero when I was a kid, man. I didn't want to be like Mike. I want to be like Christy. <laughs> I really didn't see anything wrong with it until I was given an assignment by my teacher to dress up as our heroes. <laughs> my childhood was cruel. It was terrible. <laughs> Could you believe my mom, who didn't let me celebrate Halloween, <laughs> let me dress up as a figure skater and go to school? Let me put on a onesie. A bedazzled onesie, I went to school. And I had to get my classmates to guess who I was. <laughs> yeah. First guess was Prince. That was the first guess. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I'm an athlete. Prince? I don't know what's going on. It was one of the saddest days. I was so upset that day. And I remember being in front of the class and seeing them start making all these gay jokes. It got really homophobic because kids are mean. And I was getting upset. I was sitting in front of my peers and I was really embarrassed. And one of my classmates saw I was getting embarrassed and he saw my eyes watering up. And he stood up, he was like, hey, what are we doing, okay? Every day I go home to two dads. And what Leclerc just did, man, man, that's the gayest thing. <laughs> That's the gayest thing I've ever seen, guys. <laughs> and my dad sleep with their door open. I don't know what's going on, but take the feather out your hair, Leclerc. What are you doing? You need a dad? I got two. I got an extra one. You can have my extra dad. I don't need. <laughs> but that really happened, man. I did. My mom was so strict. She's from Haiti, so my mom is a. Uh, it's an immigrant. She loves America, loves it so much. She loves America, she loves American expressions, our idioms, even if she doesn't know what they mean. <laughs> Which is unfortunate. <laughs> she heard one American parent say, when you get home, that butt is mine. And my mom was like, oh, oh, what is this, eh? What 
is this expression, eh? She looked at me, she said, Leclerc, when you get home, your butthole is mine. I'm like, Oof. I'm like excuse me? <laughs> She's like, I brought you into this planet, so I kill you. I'm like, no. Mm. I'm like, mom, you're gonna lose custody if you keep saying that. Don't say that in public, okay? She tried though, she tried her best. My mom is trying to date now, which, uh, which is bad. <laughs> She's trying to date online and, uh, you know, the internet and my mom, they don't really get along. <laughs> she tried to date online, make an online profile. And uh, when I looked at her profile, uh, it was just a picture of a cat. And uh, yes, we can. That was her whole account. <laughs> She was like, I don't know why anyone's not emailing me. I'm like, nobody wants to hook up with a cat, mom. Why are you? <laughs> this is the first impression you're making. She's like, well, can you help me with my online account? I'm like, yeah, but first you need a picture. Do you have any pictures? She's like, no. I'm like, all right, fine. Me and you, we're going to have a photo shoot. <laughs> yeah, me and my mom. <laughs> photo shoot. <laughs> It was going well, but halfway through it, I found myself saying things that a son should never say to his mom. <laughs> I was like, ooh, you a bad girl. Go ahead, mom. <laughs> Looking good. Go ahead, show me some shoulder, mom. Give me some shoulder right there. Ooh, you're going to kill him. You're going to have a hot girl summer, mom. That's what you're going to have. Her pictures turned out great. She, uh, we went back home. She uploaded her pictures. And uh, I was like, all right, mom, I'm going to come back in a week and we're gonna see what emails you got. And I came back a week later. I'm like, any dates, what's going on? She's like, no, I haven't, I haven't emailed anyone back. I'm like, why not? We, we set up the thirst traps, right? <laughs> All you gotta do is check the bait. What are you doing, mom? She's like, well, English is my second language. I'm not comfortable sending guys emails. Son, can you? <laughs> Can you send emails for me? I'm like, Mom, um, with all due respect. Uh, <laughs> Hell no, I'm not gonna send no emails for her. Are you crazy? Are you kidding me? What do I look like? She's like, well, we've come this far, please. I'm just trying, I don't wanna be alone. I'm like, all right, Mom, I'll do this for you, right? So, turns out I'm surprisingly good. <laughs> at flirting with 70-year-old men. Like, <laughs> these guys love me. I don't know what it is. <laughs> they like Christy Yamaguchi. I like Christy Yamaguchi. It's like, it's a match made in heaven. <laughs> if I'm being honest, I don't think that most of the guys that I matched with were good for my mom. <laughs> I don't. They weren't good enough for her. My mom deserves the best. You guys understand? She deserves the best. And then I met Harold. <laughs> this angel, Harold, oh my God. He was different. He really was. He was the first guy to ask me about me. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> he was really special. I really liked Harold. I talked to Harold for three months for my mom. Stay on course, guys. <laughs> for my mom. Talked to her for three months, and it was, he was great, man. Eventually, I told my mom, I was like, Mom, I think I found the one. Like, Harold is perfect for us. Like, <laughs> he's great. Eventually, he asked my mom out, and I'm like, Mom, this is your chance. This is what you've been waiting for. She was like, I don't have anything to wear. What do I wear? I'm like, Mom, don't worry about it, let's go to the mall. So we went to the mall, she found this perfect dress. She put it on, uh, it fit her like a glove. She was like Cinderella. Then she looked at the price tag and she was like, ugh, this is way too expensive. I don't feel comfortable sending, spending this much money. Son, can you? <laughs> can you buy this for me? And my mom, if I'm being honest with you, she never wanted me to get into comedy. She wanted me to be an engineer or, or a scientist or a doctor. She was so ashamed that I got into comedy because it was hard and I wasn't doing well at first. And then I did a Tonight Show. Yeah, yeah. 
And my mom called me, she was so happy. She said, son, you know, I always believed in you. <laughs> I, just, I know you didn't. <laughs> so this is my chance to pay it for it. I'm finally doing better. She's like, son, can you take care of this? And I'm like, you know what, mom? Do you think money grows? <laughs> <laughs> on trees. We are poor. I don't know. <laughs> you guys have been so great. My name is the clerk, guys. Give it up for y'all.